how much money do you make? A uh, little direct of a question. A um, couple million a year right now. How old are you? 23. Okay. A couple million a year at 23. Pretty good. What do you good? What do you do? So I teach people sales. How do you teach people sales? It's a traditional sort of info product model that a lot of people follow now. Um, coaching, course, community. Uh, within the three of those, we can give everybody basically what they need. Um, we are driving traffic from a personal brand. So my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube, um, driving that to call booking funnels. We do what we teach. So you book a call with us and we close you, mm -hmm. but we do it in a very like authentic way. So like, right. we're not, we're not going to like manipulate some kid into like, Hey, Hey, you should do this. Like if it's a good fit for you, it's a good choice for your career, which is the same way we teach other people. Uh, then we'll close them and they join the program. So, so what you're basically selling them is just one, how to think about this business. How do you become successful in sales? Two, all of the sales training tactics and techniques. Three, how to land sales jobs, I sense. Yes. yes. Sales is the most viable skill on earth. It is probably the easiest thing for a beginner to get into and actually make real money without building a business. So the, the offer is probably the most important part. I mean, you could, I always say this, you could take an amateur salesperson mm -hmm. Put them on a gold mine offer is what we call it. It's our terminology. Like if you go sell for Iman, mm -hmm. you could be horrible mm -hmm. and still close a lot of deals because people are already ready to buy. So you're teaching people how to become high ticket closers, salesmen, or people with personal brands that sell info products. Specifically, yes. that is what you teach. Specifically, sales. coaching consulting is coaching our bread consulting. and butter. We have kids that do solar. Um, we have kids that do sort of like niche things like watches and planes mm -hmm. and, and whatever. But my recommendation, the easiest thing is coaching consulting. It's a walk in the park. You're teaching people how to, the whole entire sales process for people who sell high ticket courses. And this is a big thing. I mean, that's what, basically what Alex Hermosi's business was. Jim Launch was yeah. selling five, what was it? $16,000 programs, yeah. which had dozens of salespeople. Like you're basically coaching this process. So how your funnel is personal brand. Mm -hmm. Your Twitter persona is one of my favorite on Twitter. 100%. <laughs> I love your Twitter. And so you're basically making content on Twitter. You're constantly talking about uh, sales, sharing some of your lifestyle, mm -hmm. and then people that are interested and want to kind of learn from you, and then what happens from there. As of actually two days ago, so now we launched a lower ticket program. So it kind of changes things up. We've been the high ticket guys for the longest. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to join, you had to book a call. Mm -hmm. But if we want to go more mass market and we want to have the impact we want, we have to Sometimes, even if your bread and butter is high ticket, sometimes you got to know what's best for you. So we also are now doing low ticket, which is just a credit card checkout. Um, and then they're going to get into the program. Now. How much? Uh, 997. Okay. Right now, it's going to roll out at like 1500 to the market. Once they sign up for 997, what do they get? So they get a full A to Z course. So imagine you're going to go learn a basketball lesson from LeBron, right? If a kindergartner trains with LeBron and then a D1 college basketball player trains with LeBron, who's going to get more value? Hmm. I would say the D1 athlete because he's, he's closer to that level. Yes. So technique. if we're going to give you live coaching, which we do, that's the best way to learn sales. It's an active skill. It's like MMA. You don't learn MMA from watching YouTube. You mm -hmm. have to do it. You know what I mean? But you have to have context. So we have a full A to Z library of, of recorded videos mm -hmm. like Netflix. And then we have live coaching. So we run several coaching calls a week. Um, role plays, sparring. We, we call it sparring partners. Right. Where you're literally running a mock call, oh, that's cool. which is the realest thing you can get mm -hmm. opposed to like a live offer. Um, call reviews once you're on an actual offer. So I always like in sales of sports, like if, if you have game film in football, you always watch film to learn your mistakes, what you could do differently, whatever. We take the same approach with sales. So we can literally take a kid with that system mm -hmm. and then with getting them an offer and showing them how from nothing to honestly, and obviously results typical, whatever, <laughs> um, like 90 days, we can take it from zero to a couple thousand dollars at least mm -hmm. um, in a very fundamental skill set because of that way we train. Okay, awesome. So it's kind of like a traditional college in the sense of they have the homework, mm -hmm. of course, they have to like review the information they have to read, and they come to class to go hands-on with an instructor. Yes. Kind of, that's kind of a similar way to think about it. Yeah, because you have to have context. That's the coaching. Yeah. Right? And then, okay, then you're actually giving them live feedback, giving helping them understand the gaps they might have missed through the course. Exactly. And then if they need a topic, you point them back to the course. Exactly. Okay. And then you said, what is a success coach? So we have basically a team of guys that are not the coaches to teach sales, mm -hmm. but honest to God, the biggest problem in info and anyone that buys a course is not the skill is not um, even the work ethic, it's belief. It's like self-belief, it's mental problems, it's mindset. The right thing for me. Yeah, for me, yeah. exactly. So even kids that buy, it's the same way as like an objection, like, oh, I'm scared to buy this. They'll be in the program of, of anybody 
and they're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. Self-doubt creeps in, yeah. right? So these accountability coaches are basically like therapists uh -huh. and they're amazing. Um, they'll hop on a call. Hey, brother, like, like you're doubting yourself. What's going on? Well, I don't know, bro. I, I sent 100 messages and it's not working. Mm -hmm. Then they'll look at what the kid has actually been doing. Oh, okay. Well, you've been sending this outreach message wrong. That's why I changed this. Mm -hmm. So it's real lifetime feedback. It's not like you, you doubt yourself, you quit. And then it's the cycle of failure. It's why are we why are we not succeeding, even if it's outside of the skill? Okay, so how many people, that's really important, like the accountability. Yes. Like keeping people accountable and actually giving them tailored advice on what they're missing. Exactly. So that's another full-time employee that you're probably paying a lot of money. Yeah. You probably have a few of those people. Yeah. So how many people are in your company that are in charge of delivering this, co this coaching and community? So we have four coaches right now, and then I also run live calls. So okay. I, haven't, I haven't taken myself out yet. I still feel I need to be involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, people sign up for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, my calls aren't even really about sales either. It's more mindset and more like light a fire under people's asses. hundred percent. Cause you were that young kid as well that went through the whole sales process learning at yeah. what, 18? 18? Yeah. I started like 18, 19. And then by 21 was being like 30 K. Yeah. So you are like so close to that person that it's way better to learn for those people that sales is the best, probably the best first skill to yeah. learn, especially if you just want to make 10 K a month. Like that's your goal. That skill will translate to everything in your life. I agree. And then you're teaching young kids who are really like, they can learn really quickly. And you can have the context of teaching them with their lingo, how it actually, like how they can stand up for themselves if they're feeling like they're not being credible because of their age. Exactly. Like you have a lot, you can really relate to them for your age. Where if it was like a 45 year old guy, Wall Street, in a suit, he's going to teach you like way different style. It's yeah. much more personal, which is why online education is great because you can learn from the person closest and most similar to you to get the best context. Yeah, but I agree. I love what you're doing. And you're really self aware of that with the way you teach. So you have five people you or you and four people that are just the coaches mm -hmm. how many people do you have in your sales team so my sales team is two closers and one setter that's it okay so there's basically eight people running this business and well including coo and then everybody else so okay so yeah a lot more 10 plus and yeah. so uh, when you say a thousand dollars for a course it might feel like a lot but in reality you're getting all of this support from all these people that are full job is to help you understand this and then get you handed off and hopefully placed into a job Exactly. So I hope people understand like that is not easy. It's a lot of work. It takes a lot. I of paid off a uh, $80,000 Amex bill this morning sitting yeah. at the table, <laughs> like 14. So, so yeah. Let's go ahead and go into the actual sales side. Because I think easy. a lot of people, whether they have a business right now, whether they're trying to start their own business, everyone, there's a product and you have to sell it. And so I think this will, whether you want to do sales as a profession mm -hmm. or want to build the team in your business, this will be really valuable for you guys. So what is the sales process? Since you teach info product for people, high ticket sales, mm -hmm. high ticket courses in coaching communities, what are you teaching the people? So I know there's the actual sales part. There's this appointment setting process. So I want to go through all of this. So let's run over. What is the system? What are they first? Yeah. Because it has, you have to have context. So the modern info product business is usually a personal brand and they run ads or they post organically. And then they're going to drive eyeballs, mm -hmm. leads, uh, emails, phone numbers, signups, DMs, whatever, right? Those all should be funneled, should be, <laughs> to, to people that don't do this, to what is called an appointment setter. So this can either be on the phone or even DMs. I have someone in my Instagram that responds to people for me because I don't have time to do that. Right. Neither does anybody else. Mm -hmm. So all the appointment setter doing is setting appointments. So let's say they get uh, email signups to like a VSL or a free training. They will call that up and, hey, so-and-so, saw you opted into this free training. I uh, just want to get your opinion on how it was. Oh, hey, I loved it. It was awesome. Like, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, cool. And then they'll qualify you and get some sort of like interest based. Like, oh, yeah, I want to I want to learn sales. I want to uh, start an Amazon business, whatever. Hey, we actually have some time this week on our calendar. If you'd like to, to book a call with one of our coaches, we can see if we can help you. Boom, booked call. That call then goes to the closers and the actual sales team. They just close deals. That's easy. So that's the two pieces. Um, appointment setting, all, this is what easy one. All you're doing as an appointment setter is like three main things. You're qualifying for two things. You're qualifying income. You're qualifying, is this a good fit? Which is kind of common sense, right? Like if you have um, sales, for example, in America is very English speaking. I cannot take someone as much as I want to with a very strong accent and make them successful. It's just, you just can't. It's an English market, mm -hmm. at least here. So you qualify, are they a good fit? Because you don't want to book your calendar space with bad leads. That you want sense. it to all be people that can buy, mm -hmm. all buyers. Um, then you want to qualify income. So you'll ask very, very, not like personally, but like, hey man, um, like they reach out. Hey, I want to learn Amazon. Hey man, thanks for reaching out. Um, is it cool if I ask you a few questions right now just to, to see if you're a good fit? Yeah, go ahead. What do you what do you currently do for a living? Oh, I'm on food stamps. Like that probably is not a person you want to put yeah, on your calendar, right? So financially qualify, qualify for if they're a good fit. 
And then you want to get sort of, we call it urgency Mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter if I want to do something. If I don't want to do it now, I'm not going to buy it from you. Yeah. Just because I want to do it doesn't mean that it's going to happen now, which means you don't get the money. That's not a close deal. So we want to get them excited and you don't want to force them to book the call as the setter. Because if you do, then your no-show rate is going to go up really high Mm -hmm. and you're booking 10 calls and a two-show. You're kind of just defeating the purpose, right? Mm -hmm. On the appointment setting. Yeah. The goal is that salespeople are the ones that are actually going to have the conversation to close the deal. Yes. But salespeople have finite energy to really- Calendar space. Mental taxing and there's not a lot of spaces. Yeah. I really want to make sure that people that actually get on a call with the salesperson have enough money to buy. They actually will benefit from this and you can get them results mm-hmm. and essentially that they're going to be a good fit for the product. So yes. You don't want to sell to someone that pretty obvious they won't even be able to buy, even if your salesperson did a perfect job. Exactly. So that's what the appointment setter role is designed to do. And how the appointment setter gets these appointments- is based on the company that they get hired at, right? Yes. But a lot of times it's like a YouTuber has a course, the YouTuber makes a video, click the link in my bio, they go to the landing page, and they just put their name, email, phone number, mm-hmm. and then immediately once that form is submitted, the appointment setter gets an automated message, and that's what you just described, what they yes. do once they get that message. Precisely. Okay, cool. So that's the point of an appointment setter. Mm. Do you ever teach like appointment setters on the system to get their own appointments, to book appointments for the company, or are you just so focused on you're going to work for a company that already has that system. This is your job when you get hired. Well, so they're not going to self-generate leads. Correct. So that's the biggest. So just teaching what the appointment setting role is, yes. got to be a good appointment setter and then find a job where a company already has this process. Yes, because you are a, you're filling a role. You're not responsible for saving a bad business. Right. A bad business has no leads. Right. Like you're, 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 as a kid that just learned sales is not going to go save some other company. Which is, so yes. you need to be a role player, be smart, know what you're good at. And then just go find someone that has leads and make the most of that. Which is why I hands down think this is the best beginner business. Yes. You know that the product's good. You know that you're going to get leads and you're just putting in reps and learning psychology. So you have to learn the skill and you're just going to go practice and you're adding value to the company. Exactly. So perfect. So that's the appointment setting role. Are there any software specifically that appointment setters use or is that also by company? Uh, yeah, it's kind of by company, but you'll still use a CRM more than likely. Uh, close, go high level, pipe drive, whatever. Um, mini chat is, is pretty big right now because short forms blowing up. This is another thing as deployment setters, you got to be cognizant if you're a good one of like what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. So if everyone's blowing up short form, what is that result in is a lot of DMS. Mm -hmm. Is it hard to filter through a lot of DMS? Yes. Mm -hmm. Instagram has no organization capability other than general folder. So what is mini chat? Explain the, so mini chat is a sort of just an automation software to where if I post a reel and I put a certain word on there and I say at the end of the reel, Hey, comment Amazon to learn more. It'll automatically DM that person so the appointment setter doesn't have to, um, whatever you put in the message. So it can be a free guide. You make a video and you say at the end, comment this word. Yes. And a viewer will comment the word, whatever you say. Yes. And if they comment that one word, it automatically sends them a message. Yes. Now the appointment setter is notified that that is now like a lead. Yes, because you can just hook it up with with software, Zapier, whatever, send that to your CRM or to Slack. So then the setter could literally from the phone just be like, oh, okay, new lead came into Slack channel click it, message them or call them or whatever it is. And then there's the human element because you don't want to do this all via automation. That's why I hear a lot of people with the AI thing. They're like, all AI is going to replace salespeople. Maybe, but we're a bit away because I personally am not going to buy from something that I know is automated and I know is a robot. Mm -hmm. It kills conversion. But if I'm a human being and I'm understanding their situation and I'm like, hey, maybe I'm a little empathetic, whatever. Mm -hmm then I'm going to close a lot more deals. You know what I mean? It's also really cool with the appointment setting is that you're humanizing the relationship where you can call them. Yes. Just now that you're making them verbally say, yes, you'll be there for your sales call at 3 p.m. Yeah. And now they feel obligated to show up because they verbally said that. Yes. Okay. Whereas if it's just an email, like, yeah, who cares? I, I don't care. Ghost people. I don't feel bad at all. But yeah. if you like told a human, I'm going to be there, you feel obligated. Yeah. I just said the same thing twice, but it's important. <laughs> so mini chat. But basically, so you they will have a CRM. They'll have mini chat. The core seller will make content. It gets triggered. And then the... Uh, appointment setters have a back-end software where they can see all of the customers you've had, all the previous calls to stay communicative and on like schedule in the future, Mm -hmm. but also all of the live Instagram DMs in one place. Yep. And so that way they don't have to be on your actual Instagram or the info product seller's Instagram Mm -hmm. because they're really influential. That'd be scary. Well, actually we keep them in. Okay. We keep them in. That is a thing? Yeah, because if you use too much automation, it just... It just doesn't work. It, we've learned this simple is better. It's literally better to just give someone you trust the login to your Instagram, which sounds scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, bro, there's ways to prevent yeah. bad things. But if, if they're actually in there, they simply, like my guy, for example, primary is my inbox. I have real relationships that I have to maintain on my Instagram. 
So they'll just move everything to the general folder, and that's basically their CRM outside of the actual CRM. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. But they can communicate through Minichat too directly. Yes, if they want to. Yes. And so they can just see all of your Instagram DMs right there, and then they can just hang out during the day because you set up a zap to their phone yep. where if someone does that, they get a text and they know what to do and just click call. A lot of heavy lifting done for them. Yeah, that's the that's the automation. Those are the systems and processes that everyone talks about. Okay. Yeah. So that's appointment setting. Now, that's probably what you teach people first if they're just, just starting. Bro, it. it's so easy. Because that's a, a very easy, but that's a way for them to understand that process. Mm -hmm. And then you're teaching them sales, which is where you make the real money with all the commission, I assume. Exactly. How much does a typical appointment setter get paid? Um, anywhere from like two to I've even seen 5% and then sometimes even a small base. So it oh. depends on the offer. But for example, um, we used to pay when we had, uh, phone setters, DM setters is too easy. I paid my guy like seven grand last month, literally for responding to DMs yeah. commission. And I think that was 4%, 5% or something. Um, so do the math on what he collected. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, off just him, but we used to pay, I think like $50 base per appointment set. Mm -hmm. That way, even if they don't close, you're still getting paid. Yeah. You're not just wasting your time. And then they would get like 2% commission. And if you sell a $5,000 offer, which is probably the median price point in yeah. this game, that's like $250 or something, mm -hmm. which is pretty dang good money. Mm -hmm. So that's that's typical. Yeah, and these companies are doing millions a month. So there's a there's a big pie out there. Yeah. Okay, and then salespeople. Yeah, so their salespeople make 10% standard in coaching consulting space. Um, pretty much everybody's 10%. My guys are 12 and a half or 15. I don't even know. They get paid very well because we are the sales company. Yeah. Um, so I want to set a precedent. <laughs> um, but like expected earnings, I've seen closers like honest to go. I made 30 K a month myself. That was the highest I ever made, but I've had, I had students make $60,000 in a month off of one influencer because they did a launch or they had a good month or they just blew up a podcast or something. So, so it's crazy. So influencer selling a $5,000 course. This person gets 10% of everything. Five hundred bucks. So they, 500 bucks. So they probably sold like 30 or 60 that month, which isn't even crazy. Or 20. It's one a day, two a day. Yeah. And that's just crazy. not crazy. You get five average is probably five or six booked calls a day. Mm -hmm. Even if you close 20%, it's like one or two deals a day. 20% is pretty bad. We close at like 80%, like literally 80%. Our, my personal team, 80%. So our only problem is just lack of booked calls. Mm -hmm. We just need eyeballs. And so um, it's, that's the personal brand game. Yeah. And you're getting there. You're doing a good job. Yeah, we're, we're working so, on it. You're going to be crushing it. <laughs> you're crushing it now, but you got a bright future. Thank you. So what makes a good salesperson? Um, the biggest thing, honest to God, is intangibles. I can teach skill. I can teach anyone the process. It's like riding a bike. Do this, do this. Remember this framework. Remember this. That's easy. But the intangibles are the biggest part. Do you have confidence in yourself? Are you good under pressure? Right? The best closers are usually former athletes or people that are just kind of like, kind of a sicko in the head, like in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like they just want it. They want it bad. Because I would rather take a kid that sucks, but wants it really bad and is willing to just go all day. First, the, the like little shy, skittish mm -hmm. kid that's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because he's going he's gonna to get crushed. You know what I mean? But I can teach this kid anything. He just has the intangibles. So uh, drive, confidence, a little bit of swagger. Like most sales guys have the same persona. Mm -hmm. Like you guys said this, like when we're playing 100%. poker, right? Um, so yeah, that's it. But also introverted guys, like you're, you're pretty introverted. Mm -hmm. I would guarantee you would be a, a amazing salesperson. You said you were, you were a closer at one point. It was one of the first things I did. It yeah. translates to every aspect of my life. But it's because you have the mental switch. So it's not, a lot of people get the misconception that like charisma is this outward, like braggadocious thing. It's not true. The, some of the best closers I've ever seen are super introverted. They just have that switch in their head and they can turn it on and, and actually get in other people's heads. It's an approach to a conversation and yeah. making sure you understand their problem, can convey that you understand their problem, and then make sure you, they understand that this does fix their problem. Exactly. And then putting up all these psychology triggers, personal brand, to showcase that you're actually legit. Yeah. At the end of the day, like I said intangibles, but probably at the end of the day, the best answer is just people that understand people. If you understand human beings, you understand psychology, you understand what makes them tick, what makes them work. I could sell literally any offer to anyone, even if I don't know the details or the logistics of the offer, simply because I understand people. Like I understand just how he talks, how he communicates. How do you train that? Practice. Do you learn? I wasn't born with this. My first sales call. Horrible. Yeah. I, I, you, you're not, you're not born with this, but you do thousands of calls. Um, and then you interact with people in real life. And then you're like, oh, I just learned this sales tactic from talking to this girl or going on a date with this girl. That's human behavior. They're all the same. Like people aren't that different. You know what I mean? You're just trying to explain the same thing to a thousand people and you just try different time. It's just different archetypes. Yeah. And everyone wants the same thing. Everyone has the same fears. Like it's like chess. So do you teach like a script? Like I'm interested. Framework. Framework. Explain it. Scripts are bad. Scripts are, are for robots, right? If you read a script, do you know why you're saying what you're saying? 
No. No. So does it come the same way you told me in content? The best content is stuff you passionately know, you innately know, because then it shines through. Feels. If I read a script, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Like, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Someone could ask you a question, and it's like completely off topic, and then you just keep going on the Yes, script. it's like, so stupid. They're like, okay. That's like rookie shit. Yeah. So we teach frameworks. A framework is basically the process of taking someone from start to close deal of the call. Through the start to framing the call to setting the tone for the call and expectations, which is a big deal to what we call the doctor frame or the discovery phase or just digging or whatever. There's a million names let's, for it. Let's break them down. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it. So intro, your intro of the call is not, hey, how's the weather? Like, mm -hmm. that's so stupid. Mm -hmm. That's old sales stuff. Mm -hmm. People are smart now and they know, I don't give a fuck about how the weather is. I don't care about how your day is. Mm -hmm. Like people, they kind of know. Of course. So what I've always done, I used to, I got really good selling to millionaires. I sold a very sophisticated six-figure investment offer. Mm -hmm. um, it was not 5,000. It was very serious. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn the lingo and how to not waste time mm -hmm. with, with these high level people. So the best way is just get on a call. Hey, John, uh, thank you so much for getting on here. I checked out your application. Um, I just want to let you know, this probably gonna take like 30 minutes. So if you have 30 minutes, awesome. If not, let's, let's reschedule for another time. But basically I'm just going to ask you some questions, see if this is a good fit for you. See if we can help. If not, I'll point you in the right direction. Just sound fair. I'm not wasting your time. We're both on the same page. I look mad professional. Okay. So that's the why you're doing it. Yes. So the goal is to just Make it very clear. You know, this guy's a high-end professional. That's what he values. Rapport is bullshit. So if he values his time. And so yeah. you want to make sure you are showing him respect on what he values right out the gate. That's yes. The Rapport yeah. selling is bullshit. I'm not trying to become your friend on a sales call. I'm not. I'm probably going to challenge you on a sales call and say mean things. Like, that's the reality. The goal is to transfer value. Yes. Value is not kindness mm -hmm. or being nice or kissing their ass. Mm -hmm. It's different. So you set the frame for the call. And then you want to uncover information. So like if, let's say you want to get into sales and you DM'd our team, you get on a call with me. I want to know what you do right now, where you want to go. So that's the gap. Where are you right now? Where do you want to go? That's called gap selling. Your offer fixes the gap, obviously. It's the bridge that connects two things. But that's lower level. Higher level than that is I want to get to the very, very, very bottom of why you want to do things. So if you're in McDonald's right now and you want to make 10K a month online, I'm going to ask you, what's it like working at McDonald's? And then I'm going to dig further. I'm not going to take a surface level answer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hate it. Okay, cool. Next question. That's rookie shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hate it. Well, why do you hate it? Well, I mean, bro, I have to wake up early. I, I don't make very much money. I can't really take care of my mom. Oh, what was that? Your mom. Oh, so it's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. So what do you like? What do you mean you can't take care of your mom? Like, is that a is that a big goal for you? Yeah, bro. My mom. My mom has cancer. Like, some crazy heavy stuff happens all the time. Oh, bro, I, I, I feel for you. Um, listen, I took care of my mom. I, I had a similar goal as you. So, I mean, that's admirable. Um, and then you go to the next thing. You don't want to punch it too hard, but you have to bring up emotion. People have to have pain to move. It's like the boiling frog thing, mm -hmm. right? If you put a frog in a pot and you heat the water up slowly, it will cook itself alive. But if you take a pot of water and it's already hot and boiling and you throw a frog in, it'll jump out. Mm. So you have to make people feel it or they won't take action. They won't do it now, which is what you need. Um, so you dig, uncover information, get to the bottom of it, actually dig past service level answers. And then you want to start to frame your offer as a solution to all of those things they told you. Mm. No one books a sales call without problems. It doesn't, I've never out of thousands of calls, <laughs> yeah. never, ever, ever have I had a sales call booked where I'm like, Hey, how's business going? If it's a B2B, Oh, everything's great. I love how much money I'm making. Like, it, or Hey, like, uh, how's your, how's your day going? You want to learn sales? Oh yeah. I'm making a million dollars. I would love to learn this too. Like yeah. it, it's a problem. So you are basically just fixing their problems and helping them get where they want to go in life with what you sell. And it's as simple as that. It's almost like you're helping them make the decision. And yes, they're giving, they're almost giving you ammo on how that's to literally what I, yeah. that's so funny you say that. So I, I, I literally tell students to like visualize this because it, I just always did this. Imagine every answer you get is a bullet and you're loading it into a magazine mm -hmm. and then you're not going to try to kill your prospect at the end, but like you're going for the shot, you're going for that close. And the more ammo you have, the more shots you can take, which means the higher percentage of chance you can close that deal. I, that's literally, I say the same thing. Yeah, if we buy on emotions, if we didn't have emotions, no decisions would ever be made. People mm -hmm. like say emotional decisions are bad. Every decision is based on emotion. Yes. And so you are trying to get what their emotion triggers are and then frame your product as a way to solve those emotions, to take that. Exactly. Away. But you only can do that confidently if you believe in the product. Yeah. So if you genuinely believe your product will help them, then it's okay to use these not unethical, but but it's way persuasion it's tactics yeah. and make it very clear like, hey, this is why you want to do this. And I know for a fact this will work for you. Mm -hmm. You are a good fit. I've talked to a lot of people 
And this is a way to actually get out of your situation and help your mom. Now, if you actually want to do that, it's going to require action. You need to bet on yourself. Mm -hmm. So you need to get that framing to how it best would trigger their emotions to actually buy. Exactly. To help them. Exactly. Like like our guys that sell our offer, my team, they're one of my one of my closers is nineteen years old. He made twenty four thousand dollars last month. Crazy. He's from the woods in Pennsylvania, like similar to where I'm from. Country kind of accent, never seen money in his life. Twenty four K. He is so committed about what we sell because it changed his life that like he's got kids crying on calls. And it's it's not unethical because we know if we give this kid this program, we get him in. And he actually works. His life has changed forever. Mm-hmm. You know how easy it is to sell? It's easy. And then, so this, the next part, you said emotions. So there's the, the emotions of bringing up to actually relate the offer to the problem, to fix it. But then the next step is objections, mm-hmm. which is the big scary thing everyone freaks out yeah. about, right? It's the same thing. All objections are based on fear, unless it's logistical, which is like 1% of the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have to move money from this account to this account. That never happens. Yeah. Okay. So I need to think about it. Most common objection ever is not a real objection. An objection is like a state of being, okay? Like I am scared is an objection. I have never spent this much money is a fear objection based on money, okay? I need to think about it is not a state of being. Mm -hmm. So that's bullshit. So the same way is you're kind of like a therapist in in all reality. Your job of getting over objections is to simply help them get over their fear. People shoot themselves in the foot. That's why coaching is a, a even a product. If everyone had no mental like Block. limits or yeah. blocks, they would never buy a coaching program. Hundred percent, they would never. But because oh, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. They book the call because they want to, but then they won't buy because then they're scared on the call of actually taking the risk. Mm-hmm. It sounds so stupid, but it's human behavior. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. That's another objection. Oh, I, I don't know, bro. I've never spent this much money money before. It's fear. Mm-hmm. It's because you've never done it. Okay. And then, uh, I mean, we can get into handling different objections. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So most common, most common out of all is I need to think about it. Again, it's a, not a state of being. It's not a real objection. Underneath, that's a smoke screen. Underneath of that is either fear, fear with money, or self-doubt. Logistical, let's just throw out the window. It's one of those three. It's all fear. It's just different flavors of fear. Mm-hmm. So it's either I don't believe in myself. I don't believe in you and your product. I don't think it can work. Um, or I simply am scared to death to invest this much money because this is a scary thing to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if that's the deal, oh, I need to think about it. Okay. Well, uh, I totally understand, bro. Like, listen, this is a big decision. I would think about it as well. Most people would go, oh, what do you need to think about? (laughs) Like, that's so stupid. Mm -hmm. Uh, you always want to agree. So the, the process of handling an objection is isolate, confirm, redirect, and then, then kind of just fix it. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to isolate it. So I need to think about it is not real. So I'm isolating. Okay. Which one is it? Well, listen, bro, I understand it's a big decision, but I'm curious, like what's coming up. That's, that's kind of making you hesitate. That's a very chill way to ask. Why do you think about it? Right? Well, I don't know, bro. I just, I don't know. It's just a lot of money for me. I, I've never really spent that much money before. Boom. Bingo. What is it? Is it fear? No. Is it money? Yes. But it's not specifically, oh, I don't have enough money. There's two different kinds. And the thing with objections that most people freak out about is you can't handle like this objection with this solution. Each objection has its own solution. And you got to know there's only like four or five anyway. So for that particular one, I don't know, man, I've never really spent this much money before. Yeah, bro. I mean, I totally understand. I mean, have have you made a million dollars? Well, no, I I haven't. Okay. So are you ever going to make a million dollars if you just didn't start. Like you don't get the thing without starting the thing, right? Mm. So my best way of frame of handling objections is simple analogies. It's literally so simple. Like don't do this complicated wordplay. Don't do ninja, whatever. Oh, I'm Grant Cardone. I'm Jordan Relfer. Literally make simple analogies. So for example, I don't know, bro. I, I've, I've been burnt in the past. I, I, I bought a course. They scammed me. Okay. Listen, bro. I totally understand. Like it sucks. It's happened to me before. I feel for you. Uh, how, how much did they scam you for? Oh, two grand. That sucks, bro. Humor. Oh, it sucks, bro. But let me ask you a question. Have you had a girlfriend? Yeah, I've had a girlfriend. Okay. Uh, are you with her? Or like, are you still with her? No, we broke up. Why'd you break up? Oh, well, she cheated on me. Oh, that, that sucks, bro. I'm sorry. Um, but like, let me ask you a question. Like, why do you have a girlfriend now? Like, do you still see, see girls? Yeah, I, I, I date around. Okay. Why did that girl cheating on you not scare you from dating more girls? Oh, well, I mean, I want a, I want a girlfriend. I want a wife. Okay, so why are we going to let one bad thing happening to us prevent us from ever getting anything good? That's good. 
oh shit, bro, you're right. Love you, bye. <laughs> like that's that, but that same pro. I love that um, objection handler. That's the same process for everything else. So it's like, oh, bro, I don't know. I've never spent this much money before, bro. You've never made 10k in a month. Like y- y- you've never done the thing. You're never going to feel confident about doing the thing that you haven't done. Oh, I've never went skydiving. So what am I going to do? Not go skydiving to then get over my fear? Like it doesn't make sense. So you just give simple analogies. Or um, another one that's really common in coaching consulting is like, yeah, bro, I I don't know. I mean, everything looks good, but I I think I'm just going to go do it by myself. Okay, bro. That's totally fine. I I mean, I understand. Um, But what have you been doing for the last year? Oh, I don't don't know. I've been watching YouTube videos. Okay. How much money do you make a month? I, I make, I work at McDonald's. Okay, exactly. So do you think if you keep doing the same thing you've been doing, that something is just magically going to change? Oh, uh, well, probably not. You're right. I'm going to buy. <laughs> like, literally, that's like four different things, right? But that's the same process. Confirm, isolate, redirect. So just reframe it, reframe the way they look at things, their perspective. And then use simple analogies, simple metaphors, common sense to help people see the perspective of why their limiting belief is keeping them from being successful or their fear is keeping them from getting what they want to get. That's literally... Objection masterclass. That's as good as you need to get. And the only way to get good at that is by taking a hundred sales calls yep. and each time getting constant repetition of the same objection. Mm-hmm. And then after the call, reflecting what would be a good analogy next time someone has a exactly. girlfriend when you came up with. You didn't know that three years ago. I did. Ago, but once you went through sales, you found you probably tried two or three other ones, but then the girlfriend one really resonated with everybody. It's my go-to, and especially for me because I sell to eighteen to twenty-five year old kids. Perfect. So, what do they relate to? What is like their language or lingo? Oh yeah, I got cheated on. <laughs> oh yeah, I broke up with my girlfriend. It didn't work, but I'm I'm still going to go find another one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's understandable. It's relatable, which is great that you're teaching people close to your age. Yes. So that's really important to understand. And the only way you actually get the skill of sales is by repetition. Exactly. And I can see why it's it's really scary to try and really to start. Yeah. You don't want to let people down. And tons of other reasons, but. That's the objection handling. Is there any is close the last section? Well, objection handling is a close, basically. Okay. So so the close, the pitch is important as well. Um, I used to teach this, and we kind of changed the way. I used to teach make your offer and shut up. But kids took it too literally mm-hmm. and would literally be like, okay, so this is $10,000. <laughs> and then they would just sit there, which you want to do because yeah. you want to let the prospect think. think. Yeah. You, you, what you don't want to do is yeah, be like, reason. so this is, you're going to get this, 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 this is how it works, and it's $10,000. But if you buy right now, I'll give you a discount. Like, you don't want to do that, right? Yeah. So what we teach is summarize their problem. It's like an essay. Yeah. Remember the MLA format? Yeah, the thesis statement. Bullshit. And wrap it up. Yes. Yeah. So your thesis, summarize the problem. Okay. So for example, John works at McDonald's, wants to make 10K a month online with remote sales. So we get to the end of the call. He's a good fit. I haven't really pitched yet. So the objection will be after this, but we, we, are, we kind of skipped order. So I just be like, hey, John. So listen, bro. Um, it's been like 30 minutes. I Honestly, I think you are a really good fit for what we do. Um, just real quick, I just want to make sure, do you have any questions before we continue? Oh no, man, everything sounds awesome. You always want to temp check, right? Mm-hmm. Cause you don't want to start to pitch and then they're lacking actual, like, like knowledge, actual yeah. information. Cause then you're like pitching to a wall. They don't know what's going on. Like yeah. you're, you're just going to hurt yourself. So, Hey, any questions? No, we're all good. Okay, cool. So like I said, I think we could really help you. Um, and I know you said right now you're working at McDonald's. I know you have enough money saved for, for the investment in the program. Um, but I just want to let you know, we've worked with a lot of people in your situation. So don't feel like you're an anomaly. Like we've helped a lot of kids with, with little jobs or nine to fives or even drop out of college. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you this with this and this way. So for us, there'll be, Hey, we're going to teach you appointment setting and sales A to Z. We're going to give you live coaching. So you're not just in a course by yourself. And then we're going to actually help you land an offer or an opportunity. Let's say I was selling Amazon because you don't want to feature sell, but you got, they, they kind of know what they're buying. You know what I mean? So there's a fine line. So let's say like an Amazon course, same thing, like same structure. So, hey, bro, we're going to help you set up your, your Amazon store. We're going to show you where to find listings, where to find products. And then we're actually going to coach you um, live calls every single week to make sure that your store is going uh, where it needs, I don't know Amazon, but where it needs to go, mm-hmm. your numbers are right, whatever. Right. Cool. And then, so that's the point is like summarize the problem. So it's more personal. Like, hey, I'm not selling you this so you buy my shit. I'm selling you this to fix your problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. So summarize. We use McDonald's kids again. Um, hey, blah, 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 blah. Here's our offer, course, coaching, live calls, whatever. Um, and then anywhere from 30 days we've seen, but, but uh, listen, you got to work hard. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you're going to be rich overnight, but if you can work hard, we typically see success anywhere from 90 to a hundred days. Um, and it's up to you. It depends on the offer. It obviously depends on your skill level and your commitment, but I'm confident that we can get you to that 10 K month mark. Does this sound fair? 
yeah, bro, it sounds awesome. I'm in, right? Because mm-hmm. you just summarize the problem. Mm-hmm. So then you would state your offer. So so the total investment, you don't want to say the cost, the price, the course. You want to say investment. Sound a little fancy. Language so, matters. Language, language, like contract. You don't want to say contract. Agreement, right? Mm-hmm. So the total investment for this is $4,000. And then you wait. And that's the part where a lot of people will like fuck up is they get nervous and have like squirm. But what you're doing is you got to understand someone that's never bought something for four grand is going to get hit with a punch in the face. You'll be like, holy shit, four grand? It's a lot of money. Ton of money. It's a lot of money. So you want to like not interrupt that process because it, it, I, I swear it like spikes your cortisol or something. 100%. So, hey, bro, the investment for everything we talked about is going to be $4,000. Um, so what's your best email? And I can go ahead and send, the, send the, the email over for the invoice. And they're thinking, wow, I got like 3800 in my bank account. My mom might support me. I might need to ask her for money. I really want to do this. Yes. But if you jump in there, you'd be like, if it's too much for you, man, just let me know. Then you're giving them like the easy the out. out. Stay comfortable. Yes. You want to wait. So you, you don't want to, again, you don't want to be a weirdo. Like sometimes there are points where you'll read their body language or maybe they're like saying something, then you will interject, but you just want to state it, let them think. And then they're going to say either let's do it. Oh my God, there's a lot of money. What the fuck? <laughs> um, or, oh, I don't know, bro. I need to think about it is the most common. Then you do the objection handling process, like we said, and then you handle the objection. Hey brother, are, are you ready to go? Yeah, bro. I'm ready. Okay, cool. What's your email? I'll go ahead and get you in right now. And then, please, for the love of God, take payment on the call. You do not have a closed deal until there is a credit card or a, a wire in your actual company's account, okay? So a lot of kids, including myself, when I first started, I was like, I just closed this deal. Didn't get paid. Yeah. Hey, you ready to pay the invoice? Never hear from them again, okay? So get payment on the call and just do it smoothly. So you're not going to be like, hey, bro, what's your credit card? Just be like, okay, awesome. Let's get you started. I want to go ahead and get you access right now. So you can get to work. We can go ahead and get get on top of this. We're not wasting time. What's your best email? And I'll actually sit on the call with you and go ahead and get that payment taken care of. Done. Close deal. That sales process, everything we just went through, guarantee you, whether you're an info product owner, you're a coach, you have a business, you're a closer or a setter, if you can adopt that framework into your mind in the same way that, like if you're a fighter, you know how to throw a one, you know how to throw a two, you know how to throw a hook, whatever. If you can adopt it the same way, you will close so many more deals. It's not even funny. I think a lot of people overlook the importance of appointment setting. And it's Bro, it's so important. But it will literally like put cut your cost of acquisition to third if you do it if you have a good system in place. Mm-hmm. But back to what you're saying, uh, taking payment over the call. One, you're doing video calls, right? Every time it's like on Zoom. It depends. But so the, some people do I phone. Do. We like Zoom because I love to see body language. Body language is the most important thing. It tells yeah. me more than words. So all through the phone, and then when you're asking for payment, are they reading the credit card number over the phone? Yes. So they're reading the credit card number to you and you're entering it in. Yes. Okay. And then are, where are you entering it in? Just what's a software that you typically use? Stripe. We use Easy Pay. We use a Stripe is not a real payment processor for people that don't know. Um, they're kind of just an interface like software. Yeah. But whatever it is, Stripe, Easy Pay, million payment processors. You simply just want to, hey, brother. Um, so I got, I got this pulled up right now. Um, Put their name in the invoice. Yes. Right down. So, hey, what's your full what name? Okay, cool. What's your address? Cool. What's, what's the credit card number? Security number? Expiration date? Awesome. Okay, it went through. So check your email. I'll wait and make sure you get it. Oh, hey, I got it. Okay, awesome, brother. Well, listen, welcome to Closer Cartel. I'm super excited for you. Um, listen, I'd love to chat. I have another call. I got to hop one, but I will see you inside the community. And uh, let's rock and roll, bro. Do you teach any sort of onboarding? Because that yes. is, explain how you teach Well, onboarding. so I don't really teach it because it's kind of company specific. 100%. But onboarding is important. So sales is, is everywhere. Sales is not just closing the deal. 100%. Sales is, what is the culture in the community? What does the support team look like? What is the the touch point and the interaction? And even like the branding of like that email they get, is it some shitty looking email or is your logo on there? And is it a nice experience? And then for us, like if you give me, even if it's $1,000, you're a kid, you give me $1,000, I am one, grateful for your business. Mm-hmm. Two, I want you to win. And three, I'm just so like respectful of you even wanting to work with me mm-hmm. that I like throw this video at the top of our course. It's like 20 minutes. It's like, hey, bro. Listen, thank you so much. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for one, putting your trust in me, believing in me. Um, this is what's going to happen. Like it's a real onboarding and then you paint the future picture because mm. sales is great. But if you suck at delivery, you're going to lose money on your commissions on your sales because they didn't get what they wanted or you didn't get what they were promised. So you want to make sure it's congruent from what you're selling to what they get to the process of how nice were you on that call. You don't want to be like nice on the call to get their money and then they hey, collect never them. talk to them again. Yeah, you don't want to do that. They're so fire you want to make it very comprehensive. Like 
be high level, like do the Amazon approach. Could you explain how you do it for closer car talks? I'm sure you guys do this. Yeah. So this is to eliminate buyers or more. So you got, you got, you got them to buy. Mm -hmm. You hit the right emotional cords and they've decided this is the right decision for them. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the next call. So you can't keep talking to them and keep holding their hand. So they're going to pay. They're going to come down. And after like 30 minutes, they're going to be like, what the shit did, what the, what did I just, it's a lot of people, a lot of people, mm-hmm. they just spent half their bank account. This is a big commitment. It's going to be a whole scary thing. And so now they're going to start questioning and they're going to start looking at your refund policy and start mm-hmm. questioning things. So what is your anti buyers remorse onboarding strategy? They book a call with the student success guy. Okay. Okay. So they book a call with him. He literally runs an onboarding call. So even for the, the $900 program, which by the way, for people that think like the, oh, you're a course seller. Okay. I pay 15% on that commission if it's on a sales call. Mm-hmm. I then pay the setter. I then pay our hard cost. I then pay our coaches. I then pay tax. I then pay software. I'm not left with a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyone who complains about that, <laughs> you're allowed to make money. You're helping a lot of people. <laughs> yes. We all get a lot of flack. I get it. It's ridiculous. Those people aren't. But aware of on top of that, like even for a $900 product, we give personal touch. So how, how soon? Immediately. Okay. So the... Our, I believe that I don't think departmental compartmentalization is, it is efficient in systems and processes, but I think as a culture, it's not great. It's like my setters and closers work as like a sniper spotter. So like one's got the binoculars is like, Hey, ready, 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 shoot. The other guy is closing the deal, right? They're working together. Then the closer and the onboarding guy or the student success guy, they're working together. They're buddies. So, Hey bro, I just closed this guy. Um, here's his email. Go ahead and onboard him make sure he's good to go. Okay. Awesome. Guy immediately gets contacted. Awesome energy on the call. Bro, I'm so excited you're in Closer Cartel. Listen, I'm just going to run you through this. We have a roadmap video of literally no guesswork. Do this, 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 and then you will make 10K a month. There's no guess. It's like math, okay? Um, So they run through that. They run through expectations, which is a huge thing. How do you set expectations? Are you going to join this course? And then I'm just going to be like, oh, you get Luke's phone number. No. Mm -hmm. Expectations. What is going to happen? What should you expect? Because... You could tell someone expectations that they don't love, but if you told them, they're not going to be mad. Right. Like it's, it's, it's yeah. like human, uh, right. this fallacy. Um, but it's immediate. So onboarding, get them in, get them excited. Hey, brother, here's access to everything. If you need any questions, here's my number. We give their literally the phone number on iMessage. Mm-hmm. Um, just let me know what you need. Let's rock and roll. Let's get to work. Awesome. So it's like basically when people sign up, they have like this idea of what it's going to be. And that idea could be delusional. Like I'm going to be best friend with Luke. We're going to yep. do business together. I'm going to get in with him. He's going to be my best friend. But just being really candid, like, guys, obviously, we can't be talking all day, every day. I don't have time for this, but I do want to help you. So I'll be here twice a week. Yep. I'm here to help you. We have all these people here to help you be successful. Then here's how the best fast track to follow to learn and actually see the result you want. Exactly. And just make that very clear out the gate. And that's mandatory for them to go through before they even start the course. Exactly. That's your onboarding process. Yep. Okay. So it's they book, they pay, they have an uh, accountability coach or success coach right away. They have to go through that. Is that emailed to them right away? Um, so it's emailed, but we, we use like Discord. So we're straight up just giving them the link to okay. join and then they're in. Okay. And then it's just expectations in like a certain Discord channel, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, even in Discord, it's in the community. It's in the course. It's in the the onboarding module. It's in the welcome video. It's in the roadmap. It's literally called the 100K roadmap. Here's how you make 100 grand. No guesswork. Do this. I guarantee it works. Okay, Easy. cool. How long is your course video-wise, time-wise? The high-level coaching program, we're, we kept all the videos because they're just in-depth. In uh, Google Doc vids, 50 hours of training. And then like, who knows, 50, 60 of coaching calls. Cause we record all the calls. They're like mm-hmm. three hours each. Um, the new curriculum I think is 20. Um, and that's no fluff. It's literally to the second of each video is like, here's learning, no fluff, no bullshit. I don't need to sell you my story. Like get money, make money, get results. So like 20 hours right now. Okay. 20 hours. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay, good. So these are people that have gone through the system. Do you help them once they've gone through your program? Do you help them get a job? Yeah, we have to. If you teach kids sales and you don't help them get a job, doing them a disservice. How do you find companies? So we, I want to teach a man to fish. I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to give, I don't want to give the man fish. I want to teach the man to fish. Okay. So I, we set again, expectations. I don't want kids to come in my program and be like, bro, you didn't give me a job. Dude, go get your own job. Here's how. Be self-sufficient. So we, for example, have you ever heard of like the Facebook group method? Like how to find a job? Yeah. Well, I probably think I understand the concept. Yeah. So explain. we we were like, I, I honestly got think I was like the first person to teach it for appointment setting and sales because it was a newer thing, especially my age group. I taught that in 2021. It's now fucked. You can't even do it because everyone and their mom just spams the shit out of it. Like, what is it? 
Let, you just go on Facebook groups and you find business owners that are looking for reps or how to message them or um, how to like literally similar connections. So like on Instagram, for example, if you go to my Instagram or your Instagram and you click that little plus icon on your phone, it'll pull up similar profiles. And if you scroll through them and you literally do that 10 times, coach, coach. you have a spider web starting at one person of your ideal client. You have a spider web of people that are potential prospects. So that's one method. Um, I'll save this for the first time. We're putting this on YouTube. No one else has put this out yet. School. Hormozy just invested a massive amount of money into it. It is going to absolutely dominate coaching consulting. It is probably going to be the easiest way to go get a sales gig. You literally go join school groups, go look at your favorite influencers, people you want to work with, and go join their groups, message them. Hey, brother. And then, so the message wise, right? Message is important. Your profile has to be clean. You have to make sure you don't look like an idiot. You're not doing fucking drugs. You don't have your high school diploma on. Look like a professional, young adult with your shit together. You look handsome, nice pictures, whatever, okay? That's bare minimum. Because people will read your message. A lot of times you'll think, oh, they don't see my DM. They see your DM. All girls even. Every girl sees your DM. They just don't like you, right? It's the same concept. So make sure you you look like a real person, and then it'll reflect on the message. So simple message. Hey, I, br- hey brother, I really love your stuff. Um, I've been following you for a minute. Listen, I don't know if you have any room on your team at all, but if you have a spot, I would love to be an appointment setter for you and, and either call leads or, or take care of your Instagram. Uh, if not, no worries. Keep killing it. Uh, talk soon. Simple. Not me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. I'm an appointment setter. I learned this. I want to work for right. you. I, don't make it about you. Make it about them. 100%. You are like 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 little. Be humble. Okay? Mm-hmm. Humble yourself. Be meek. Um, <laughs> like, like everyone fucks that up. Um, but that's it. Like school groups, Facebook groups, Instagram DMs, find your favorite influencers. Um, there's some other, other ninja shit that I'm not going to say because I got to keep it in the, in the, in the, in the course. Um, but then just send good DMs. Uh, bro, I got my first five clients, even for when I had an agency, multimillionaires, blue check marks, hundreds of thousands of uh, followers as a 19 year old kid that didn't look professional at all with a DM. Yep. It changed my life. Literally sending DMs to people changed my fucking life. So it's easy. Can you appointment set or sell for more than one offer at a time? Or yes. Can... Okay, cool. How uh, do you think is a good... Okay, so like a kid, Tret. Tret works for Esqueda. Oh, nice. And me. He closes for me. He DM sets for Esqueda. Okay, cool. Made 24K last Just month. commission-based, basically. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so... I, and I want to make one comment on this, because I saw you tweet about it the other day. You were like, the average kid's profile picture is like a picture of them in the mirror with their phone covering their face, and they're like, like this, and they're trying to become a salesperson for yeah. somebody like... People immediately, they might hear like one sentence of who you are, or what you do. And then what they do is go look at your social media and look into you. Maybe they'll Google you or look at YouTube and see what you're all about. Yeah. And if you haven't put effort into just that persona, then people are going to be way less trusting of you. Yeah. Where if you just put a little bit of effort to high quality content, that's showing a little bit of like your personality, your value system and what you're all about. And a little bit of psychology baked in there. They're going to be much more like you yeah like our, our top students for example there's this kid named mason lloyd um who i'm probably gonna hire and, and make a part of our company he's built a, a bit of a personal brand on twitter good profile picture he posts actual like video content he's a closer he's building the personal brand because he's smart and he knows that if he has that brand and he builds relationships and a network of people he can work for whoever he wants he can go make 50k a month as a closer mm-hmm. he made 30k last month five months ago he lived in alabama bro dropped out of college i told him drop out he moved to Miami with like no money. Like he, I saw him at the gym. He's like, bro, I'm freaking out, bro. I got three months of rent. I don't know what the fuck to do. I was like, listen, trust process. I literally connected him with someone. They hired him. Then he got a little bit of experience as a setter. We worked for another Amazon guy or e-com offer. Made $30,000 profit last month, five, five months into the game. Okay. Mm. Personal brand. So you don't got a full influencer yourself, but like use some fucking common sense. 100%. Like just look sharp. 100%. So I guess I want to say one last thing because I think we really encompassed it well. One, I guess there's two more things. One, what would you say the values or if you had to describe the personality type or the archetype of someone who would be good for sales? Because everyone on the internet is throwing propaganda out that their thing is the best business model, whatever. Hmm. But I genuinely believe sales is the best for beginners to make 10K a month. It's the best skill you can learn. Hmm. So, but everyone's different. Everyone needs to be self-aware. What are your skills? What do you naturally gravitate towards? My partner's a developer. He cannot talk to people. He can't read people. So he probably should do sales. <laughs> but a lot of people can read people and are good with people. So mm-hmm. how would you describe someone that sales would be good for? If you have ever, ever, ever uh, just had a good funny friend group, 
or a funny group chat mm-hmm. or likes talking to girls or just been funny and, and talk to people. You don't have to be outgoing. So like, don't think that this means outgoing, right. but you're just good with people. Like talking doesn't make you feel like, oh my God, talking to people. Like if you can do that, that's literally all you need. If you can, if you can see someone's facial expression, you see a picture and you know what mood they're in yeah. or you get a vibe from them, yeah. you are going to be good at sales. A lot of people don't have that. So yeah. if you have EQ, you're good with people, you understand body language, empathy. And you don't even have to be, you, you don't have to be outgoing. You do not have to be charismatic mm-hmm. and suave. And, like you don't have to do any of that. Literally like room temperature IQ and reading people and you're going to and you make money. Speak words. Yes. <laughs> like that's really all it is. That's it. Okay, cool. So then uh, let's just go through one last time to recap everything. Mm. What a traditional sales system. Let's recap it all. So for you, let's just go through what your entire funnel is for you to make millions at 23. So my entire funnel was I've documented my life since I was 18. On Twitter. Let's just say Twitter. Twitter. I had a YouTube too, but I just sucked. Yeah. Um, so I've documented my life. People fuck with my story because it's real. Shitty childhood. This kid made a lot of money as a closer. I'm going to teach you how to do the same thing. That's my selling point. It's like, I did it. I will show you how to do the same thing. How old were you when you made your first six-figure selling? Uh, 20. I've got 20. So at 20, you made six figures doing high ticket sales. Yeah. So you anchored that credibility. That's your backing for your personal brand. Mm -hmm. Then you go on your YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, share that story, show pictures of what you're talking about, hopefully inspiring other kids. You also share a lot of sales sauce and there'll be some like technical, like how to overcome an objection. That'll be a tweet I see from you. Mm -hmm. And so you'll like mix in this value with interesting life. So your typical personal brand. Yep. And then you constantly will every once in a while reply to one of those saying, hey, we have this program. Check it out. Click the link. Exactly. Then they go to the link in your bio. They go to just a landing page. Book a call. Sales copy. Book a call. Then they hop to talk to an appointment setter. Yep. And then the appointment setter goes to a salesperson if they're qualified. Then you go through all of those sales objections, that framework that we talked about. Yep. And then once you close them from there, you have the onboarding. You have the buyer's remorse, anti-buyer's remorse process. Yep. Where they actually get an email. They get a call to the success coach. They go through the Discord. They go through all of the expectation setting. Then they're in their program. 40 hours of content. Then you coach them multiple times a week. Then from there, once they're ready to go, you teach them how to go into Facebook groups, how to actually become a presentable person, Mm -hmm. be an appointment setter, or be a salesperson for people. And they're starting to get that practice from there. And that's how you make a few million dollars at 23. Wow. What a a good listener you are. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, But (laughs) is there any softwares in between? I mean, there's a lot of software. Uh, Zapier is huge. Uh, it saves us so much time. There's some automations that you'd say are the most important. I mean, especially in sales, like you have to have clean systems. So like your CRM has to be clean. Your importing of leads from different, like, bro, you have YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, VSL, email list, YouTube this, low ticket product. All of those need to be segmented because each person needs sold to differently. They're at a different stage in the cycle. So Zapier connects all of it to, we use clothes. So Zapier to close, we use Hyros to track, even with the uh, custom UTMs. Where did this person come from? Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, ad, whatever. So we know to a T, because I'm going to talk to someone that got a free guide uh-huh. differently than I am someone that just saw me on an ad. Okay. The ad guy doesn't know who I let's am. Let's go into some of these funnels then. So yeah. you're going to do, let's say, let's go with the mini chat funnel on Instagram, because mm-hmm. you're saying really popular right now with short form. You're going to make a short form video yep. using like a nice uh, copywriting framework, good hook, good yeah. offer. Good hooks. Good hook. <laughs> Then an offer at the end saying, hey, if you want to learn more, we have a free resource. Reply the word. Sales, Sales setter, and OnlyFans. get sent in the DM. Then they download that resource and you're giving them more information on what sales is all about. Yep. It's giving them a little value, but also building their awareness to your offer eventually. Exactly. Then what happens from there? What is triggered? So a mini chat triggers that delivery of that free guide. Mm-hmm. Then what happens? The setter takes the human part over. Okay. So they get the free guide. It says something along the lines of like, hey... Uh, thanks for reaching out. Just want to send the free guide over because they know they're getting the guide because it's said on the video. So it sends that. Then uh, Ty is my setter. He'll literally be like, hey, bro, uh, like a day later. We want to give him a little window so it doesn't seem like pushy. A day later, hey, bro, uh, just want to check in. Like, how how did you like the guide? Oh, bro, I fucking loved it. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Awesome, dude. Are you, are you getting into sales? Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to get into sales. And then, again, the same framework we used earlier. Qualify, financially qualify. Get him on a call with the coach. Coach is going to give you a game plan close tiff okay so that's the instagram vertical that's instagram that is one arm of your sales that is one sales system yes okay now your youtube system is gonna youtube now is different so now explain, different. explain the youtube to vsl system so now we are simply just going to post the most valuable content we can on youtube and drive everybody to remote protocol which is the new 997 program um because we can go more mass market and then we can use our sales skill 
to upsell people from that to the actual higher level program. Opposed to, hey, you don't know me. Here's this YouTube video you see of me. Buy my $5,000 offer. Right. Opposed to that is, hey, here's the most insane sales video you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So here's this thing with a beautiful sales page for nine ninety seven using sales psychology, copywriting, which is just sales with words without a person. Um, buy this to get in the program, get them results, then upsell them to 5K. So YouTube's different now. That is automated. That doesn't rely on a setup. Yes, so YouTube is now make a YouTube video, link in the bio, remoteprotocol.com. Yep. On that landing page, there's like a 10-minute VSL or video sales letter. And the whole point of that is to like bring someone from cold to warmer. Here's my story. Here's who I am if you've never heard of me before. Here's what we do. And here's what this program's all about. Here's the outcome you will get if you like it. 997, basically, yep. with a guarantee, layering some psychology. Yep. So that's, they found you on YouTube for the first time. Cold, click a link, watch the VSL, warm, read the sales letter, speak directly to them. Mm -hmm. Then they can buy or they can book a call if they want. But since it's 997, yes. you don't usually always need a sales call. The VSL video will do the selling for you if you have a good enough offer and it's clearly communicate exactly right? but they can do a call if you want yeah they can because sometimes i have logistical problems or yeah. whatever what is the lowest ticket that you would recommend the appointment center to sales high ticket sales closer the cheapest price that would be that they should sell yeah because if you're selling a hundred dollar product you don't do any of this yeah so we we recommend two thousand dollars so like i tell students don't work for an offer that is two thousand or less gotcha so ideally um because like even if bro, you get two percent of a thousand dollars yeah you get 20 bucks yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, so two grand is, is usually the minimum. Okay. And then anything below that can typically be handled for the most part by automated sell. Yeah. Sell automated. And Zapier is connecting all of these. Yeah. Zapier, close, uh, mini chat. This is a question for my COO. I think that's about it. At least for the big ones. Webflow? Yeah. Webflow. Web Click funnels is too clunky. Yeah. Webflow. Webflow is well, much better designed and it connects to Zapier. Yeah. Okay. So that's your business. That's what you teach. And that is also good sales systems for any business person listening. You got mm -hmm. a system or a process that people can just figure out one by one. So let's just go. I'd just like to summarize and end the podcast on like a few more like personal questions on how you've learned and how you're approaching. Um, I know you also did buy a software company recently, which is a pretty big boy move. You paid yeah. for the software. <laughs> so I know it's been a different battle mm. and it's software is a much different game, but the, what is the idea behind buying that software? Um, equity. Like you can't sell a, a course business. You cannot sell info product for the most part. Personal brand based. Yeah. Yeah. You, for the most part. So if you want to get like I do to the hundreds of millions, I know I need to exit. I need a, some sort of liquidity event. Mm. Um, what has a higher multiple than software? Not a lot. Right. It brings its own set of challenges. I know I know you're a no-code guy. We are built on Bubble. So uh, Closeify is fully on Bubble. It's fully no-code. SaaS in 2024 is all about getting your idea to market as quickly as possible. That's why we love no-code SaaS. We can use tools like Bubble and Make.com to make an MVP in less than a week and then validate it by bringing it to the market. So no-code tools make it possible for anyone to build software now. Exactly how Shopify made it possible for anyone to start an online store, Bubble and Make.com make it possible for anyone to build web apps. So we have a brand new program called The Future Dev where we teach you how to build virtually any software idea you have all with no code. So if you want to learn how to get into the SaaS game and build your own software, click the link below and join the WGMI Academy today. And it works beautifully. Um, I just have learned now that it's very, very difficult to run a marketplace because you have two sort of supplies. It's two businesses. Two businesses. It's like we sell two products right now, but it's still the same person. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling to the same person. I'm selling, hey, closers, buy $50 a month, get on the platform to get jobs like Fiverr or Upwork. Hey, businesses, pay to hire setters or closers on this platform. Right. It's a constant it, it, seesaw. It solves a really important problem because you're, yeah. but you are taking the accountability. These people on the sales people side are qualified and well trained. And so you have to build that trust. Yes. Because you have to control who gets, who's listing on there. And then the people that want to hire salespeople, you have to make sure that they're not selling scam companies. Yeah. And attract them because there's good salespeople. So you have to like, it's like a chicken and egg situation where you need both to make it work. And so I get what you're trying to do, but it is, it is challenging. So I, yeah, but so we'll see, we'll you, see what happens with that. It makes sense. It's a, and it's a great extension of what you do. So yeah. it's a natural fit and that's really cool. And it's really smart. It could be a really big business. There you so go. That's really cool. Okay. So that's the final, like that's the bottom of the funnel. You're now fully vertically integrated and mm -hmm. it's like the most modern way to do business and you're 23. So crushing it, dude. Favorite. Now, as you've evolved, 
you started very young and you're making a lot of money and two to three million dollars a year is a great lifestyle, but you're pushing for the hundreds of millions of dollars. So I want to kind of understand what did you used to believe like two or three years ago that you now like no longer believe or that you've kind of have changed your perspective on approach to business probably how much just how much money there is like bro i i i thought at one point honest to god my first car was 500 dollars, and i thought 500 dollars was so much money and and now i spend like six grand a month on doordash so it's it's, it's, it's like it's my 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 expectations have just like blown up um but i think with that comes i believe there's so much abundance and there's so much money so it's easier to get, you know what I mean? Like we know, we're 20 years old. Like we know guys that are taking home hundreds of millions of dollars. So for me, like it, obviously I didn't know shit three years ago. So like now everything is new, fresh skill, whatever. Um, that's the easy answer. But probably the belief thing, like I didn't believe how possible it was and how I knew I would get big, but I didn't think at 21 I'd become a millionaire. Mm-hmm. I, I, I did not. Like it. I literally moved to Miami June of 2021, I launched Closer Cartel. I got really good at business and the personal brand fast. And then six months later, I had made like $700,000 profit in in like six months. It's incredible, bro. The fact that you didn't have internet until how, when when did you get? Uh, (laughs) Um, Okay, so I didn't have internet growing up. I didn't have a phone until I was like 16 or 17. Um, I literally moved to college, I swear to God, I moved to college to get internet access because I saw... Uh, one of Sebastian G's videos uh, when I was in high school, senior year, it was like, holy shit, I can make money online. <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit, I need online. I need the internet. I don't have it right now. 17, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the sticks. So I, I didn't have it. So I moved to college, uh, took out a little bit of a, of a student loan and was like, I got eight months of uh, flunking class basically before they kicked me out of internet. So I managed to get the laptop and now we're here. Five years, you made your, less than five years, you made your first million dollars. Yeah. Three maybe. Yeah, well, 20, yeah, made, made, 21? made, yeah, made couples, couples of them. With, yeah, fuck, yeah. good job, dude. It's so crazy. Like, it was never possible for a 20-year-old to be a self-made millionaire before. Like, this is the oh. first time it's ever been possible for 20-year-olds to be self-made millionaires. And it's so, it's like, it makes me so excited. Bro, it's not. I don't know why people. I'm, I'm very grateful. I don't, I don't want people to think like, uh, I'm, I'm like this anomaly of, of whatever. I, I feel blessed. I feel very grateful. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm kind of lucky to be here, um, and to even have the thought process to do so. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think it's God, but yeah, crazy, bro. All right, dude. Well, after spending the week with you, I'm confident to say like you were actually genuinely out here trying to help people. You're credible and you're the perfect person to be teaching these young kids. So Thank you, bro. appreciate what you do. Guys, if you want to follow him, it's Luke Alexander on all social. On everything. Is it two X's? Two X's. Two X's. Luke Alexander. And then check out, if you're interested in learning sales, remoteprotocol.com. But dude, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, brother.